A while back, somebody sent me this big hunk of steel, and this is two inches in diameter, nine and a half inches long, but he said he doesn't know what it is. And we've looked at testing unknown steels, but the subject comes up over and over and over again because there's lots of new people on the channel that haven't seen those videos. So I thought we would test a little piece of this and see if we can find out something about it. The first question is, is it hardenable at all? For all I know, it is mild steel. It could be 1018 mild steel, really low carbon. Great stuff for forging projects, but not very good stuff for forging tools out of. Or it could turn out to be something like H13 that's air hardening and, and is a high temperature work steel and is phenomenally expensive. Of course, this is about a $200 hunk of H13, so I hope that is not what he sent. My guess is it'll be something else. I don't know what the original source of this material was, just something he came by. I have cut about a, oh, an eighth inch thick disc off the end of it just to have a little bit to play with. We're gonna go to the forge and we're gonna harden this possibly three different ways. If we hit on one that gives us a good hard piece of steel, then we're done. We don't need to do the others. So we're gonna start off by heating it up to a nice orange temperature. I don't know what the right critical temperature for this would be, so that's just a starting point. It's a good guess. And we're gonna let it air cool. If it gets hard air cooling it, we're done. If it doesn't get hard air cooling it, then we will oil quench it and see what happens. If it doesn't get hard oil quenching, we'll water quench it and see what happens. If it doesn't get hard water quenching, then it's probably not a steel we'd use for tools, but it's still a good piece to make some other projects with, and we'd there's some things I can do with a piece of steel this big, even if it isn't hardenable. Since most air hardening steels have a relatively high critical temperature, and we're going to do the air hardening test first, I'm going to get this pretty hot. I'm going to try and bring it up into the 1700 to 1800 range and see if it will air harden. Well, I've got this sample piece up to a nice even orange, should be somewhere in the 1700s. And I'm going to set it on this little bent piece of wire just so it doesn't sit right on the anvil. And it's over the hardy hole where it might cool off a little bit faster. And we'll let that cool till it's cool enough to touch it. It's been a few minutes. I can still feel too much heat coming off of that with the back of my hand, so it's not ready to grab yet. So this has cooled off enough to handle it. It's still a little bit warm. This is about the temperature you would normally put it into temper. But we're not concerned about tempering at this point. We just want to know, will it harden and how will it harden? So the next thing to do is find out, is it hard? I'm going to do two things to test this. The first is see if I can file it. If it doesn't file, it's hard. Yeah, that files very easy. Files like annealed mild steel, really. So definitely it's not hard. The other thing I'm going to do is I just want to see if it'll bend. And yes, it will with a two pound hammer. So it's definitely not hard. So let's put it back in the forge, bring it back up to temperature. This time, maybe not as hot because we're going to quench it in oil. And most oil hardening steels are in the 15 to 1600 range for their critical temperature. So we don't need to be quite as hot with it this time. So now let's see if it hardens in oil. Again, you want to cool it down until it's a comfortable temperature to hold. It should be much faster in oil. Always start by checking with the back of your hand. Not only will a burn be less critical on the back than it is on the, the fingertips, but if you burn yourself and react, you tend to do that, and it's better to pull away from it than it is to accidentally grab it. Okay, now let's, uh, I'm going to wipe that off with a rag, but then let's do the same two tests. So we'll do the same two tests. I can't tell if that files with any more difficulty than it did the first time. Perhaps a little, but it still files really easy, so definitely not hard. Oop. But it doesn't bend very well. So there's something to be said there. That's uh, an improvement. 
So that's very interesting. That's not really hard, but it's a lot more difficult to bend because that didn't bend anywhere near, well, it didn't really bend at all. Whereas last time I was able to bend it with a two pound hammer. As I bring this up to heat for our third and final test, I'm going to flatten it again to get a better idea of whether or not it's bending at all when I try to bend it. So I'll just take it to the treadle hammer after a little bit of heat, flatten it. Then we'll look at quenching it in water and see what happens. And into the water. This is probably a little hot, somewhere in the low 1500 range. For most water hardening steels is better. This is still looks hotter than that to me. But it will tell if, it's, if it hardens in water. And of course, water cools off quite fast, and it's not all oily and greasy. And again, we'll do the same two tests. Now that is much more difficult to file. So that is hardened. It is not glass hard or brittle hard though. And that doesn't bend at all. So it definitely is a water hardening steel. But it is certainly not as hard as something like W1 or 1095, something like that. So it is not a real high carbon steel. But there's probably some good use for this. As much pounding as that took without bending, I think there's some real potential here for struck tools and things like that. And it might be really good for hammers, fullers, swedges, things like that. But does that tell us the entire story? We can take another approach to this problem. Let's go do some spark testing. Just so you can hear my commentary, I think I'll have to turn the grinder off between every set of tests. The first thing I'm going to do is test the unknown and then a piece of W1. Well, this definitely does not have the complex spark pattern that W1 does, which makes sense because we know it doesn't harden like W1. Let's test it against some 5160, much less carbon. That's a little bit closer, but I think the 5160 is still a more complex, brighter spark pattern. Now I'm pretty sure it is not 01, but let's go ahead and test it against a piece of 01 just to see. Now 01 has a very boring spark pattern, so we know that's not what it is. How about testing it against something like S7? Again, we know it's not that because it didn't air harden. And again, the S7, because it's got a lot of alloys in it, doesn't spark anywhere near like a simple carbon steel does. So there's no reason to worry about testing it again. It's H13, and we're sure it's not wrought iron. I do have a piece of mild steel. Let's compare that. Now personally, I would say the spark pattern is closer to the mild steel than anything else we've tested, which is really interesting because this hardened better than mild steel would. Mild steel should not harden at all in, in water like that. To harden mild steel, you need to use super quench. So I'm pretty sure this is something better than mild steel. Let's try it against some 1045. Well, that was perhaps closer, but I think the 1045, even though it's relatively low carbon, still seemed to have a brighter spark pattern than this did. But closer than a lot of what we've looked at. The last thing I have is a hunk of 4140.
Well, what did we learn? Well, I'm not sure we learned a lot other than spark testing is very subjective. You have to evaluate sparks and it's hard to see them exactly side by side. I think it might actually be easier on the video than it is in person because of the angle of the camera and the fact that it will be magnified somewhat on the video screen. But in any case, we know that this is not a high carbon steel. It's not going to make knives. It's not going to make good chisels. Probably not going to make very good punches, but maybe. It might be something close to 4140. It might be something close to a 1045. Maybe something more like 30 points of carbon instead of 40 points, and that might be fairly accurate. It wasn't too far off the spark pattern for the 4140, but 4140 is an oil hardening steel, and this definitely didn't harden fully in oil. It got harder, but not as hard as it did in water, and it certainly didn't get brittle in water, so I don't think it's an oil hardening steel, so I doubt that it's 4130 or 4140. There are thousands of steel alloys out there. We're never going to know for sure. Nobody's ever going to tell us for sure. But what we know is this piece of steel does harden to some degree. Not hard enough to be a good cutting tool, but it's probably pretty good for a struck tool or a die of some sort. It would probably make excellent fullers, swedges, any form of bottom tool it would probably be really good at. It might be a pretty good hammer, although you might have to dress it quite often. This little diagonal peen hammer I use all the time is made out of some similar unknown material that sort of gets hard, sort of doesn't get hard, and it's a fine hammer. I have to redress the head quite frequently compared to hammers made out of harder, higher carbon steels, but it performs just fine. So if you make a hammer out of something like this and it mushrooms over in six months, well, dress your hammer head and then keep using it. It's not going to hurt anything. It just means you got to take care of your tools a little bit more often. So I'm going to consider that this is suitable steel for making some form of tools out of. Probably for me, what I'm going to do with it is make bottom tooling for the anvil. It would be great for swedges and fullers and things of that sort. And that's probably what I'm going to save this for. I wish I could remember the name of the gentleman who sent this. I've had some email conversations with him and I'm just terrible at names. I'd have to go back and hunt through my old emails and I don't have a computer up here in the shop. So whoever you are, I'm sorry I forgot your name, but thanks very much for the piece of steel. I hope this answers some of your questions. It might just give you a whole lot more questions. But experiment with it. Make something out of it that isn't too critical. Use it, see how it performs. The other question we didn't even look into is tempering. Since this didn't even break hitting it with a hammer after quenching in water without any tempering, maybe you don't have to temper it, but I'd probably temper it to 300 or something anyways, just to take any excess stress out of it and make sure without making it too soft. But again, experiment with it. So for any of you that have an assortment of mystery steels laying around the shop, this is pretty much the procedure I go through to try and determine what it might be or what it might not be and what type of things I might want to make out of it. Now, complete mystery steel like this, I tend to avoid sending out to customers. If it's a particular source that I've got a lot of experience with and I've really figured out how to deal with it, maybe I might make a customer product out of it depending on what it is, but there is always a risk. And you never know for sure what it is. You never know what the performance is going to be. So if it's critical, you're probably better off buying new steel and you know exactly what you got. You can look up the formula for hardening and tempering and know exactly what to do with it. You can't do that with this. We made some good guesses today. And I think for tools right here in the shop, I would be happy to use this stuff. In fact, we will look at making some tooling with it sometime in the near future. So again, thanks for sending me the piece of steel. I hope you got something out of this. I hope everybody learned a little something about mystery steels. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Take a few minutes, watch some of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But as always, make time in your day, get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.